Seven and a half million dollars in federal pandemic funds went towards these hospital grade disinfecting UVC towers for each CCSD school. But after the facilities chief who secured the purchase in July, Jeff Wagner left CCSD to become a general manager for R0 in January. Trustee Ford and others I heard from questioned if there was any connection between the contract with the district and Wagner's new job. And definitely set off my spidey senses. Like, wait, what, what? You know, is this, did I get duped? Even if they just one school and just gave us the chance to use the products in one school and make it a, a test case, they would see the dramatic difference. That's Jared Mendelson. I'll share more of his story shortly, but first a look at these ARC devices. Maybe your child's seen one in their school's nurse's office. May of 2021, toward the end of a school year marked by distance education, CCSD needed a product that would improve indoor air quality so they could reopen schools in the fall. May is when chief of facilities at the time, Jeff Wagner, says he met and befriended R Zero's co-founder and president at the time. Eli Harris. We know this from Wagner's post on R Zero's blog, published soon after he started working for R Zero in January of this year. In it, Wagner states, I met Eli in May of 2021 and immediately formed a friendship with him. He was adamant that I needed to join the company. In May, Wagner was still serving as the facilities chief at CCSD. According to Nevada Revised Statute 281A.400, a public officer or employee shall not seek or accept any gift, service, favor, employment, engagement, emolument, or economic opportunity, which would tend improperly to influence a reasonable person in the public officer's or employee's position. Those are all laws that we have in place within our state, gotcha. okay. and they need to be followed, no matter who you are. CCSD's own policy goes further. On May 20th, Wagner forwards Harris CCSD's custom breakdown of evaluations of their school's needs. On May 25th, Harris forwards Wagner an internal company email. In it, Harris writes confidential and just for fun and brags about poaching another one of his top company execs from a government agency. We're doing some pretty neat work, Harris tells Wagner. That same day, Wagner pays for the first ARC tower to pilot, nearly $25,000. This is when Wagner and Harris met with the district. By June 10th, Wagner had given R0 feedback on their pitch to the district. Harris tells him, let us know if you need any air cover along the way. We're all on standby for you. Game time. Now it's important to note as a general rule, Nevada state law requires an open bidding process for all purchases of more than $50,000. To give everybody a fair shot at acquiring those contracts. And so that districts are getting the best price and best value for our taxpayer dollars. To make sure that the wealth is getting spread evenly, to make sure we're not just allowing companies to monopolize. That's why on July 15th, Wagner's co-worker raises the issue. CCSD's Assistant Director of Purchasing and Warehousing, Steve Staggs, tells Wagner, quote, multi-million dollar no-bid contracts raise many questions from competing vendors, the media, the public, etc. It would be hard to justify a sole source, but plot twist, there is one workaround. It's something Staggs informs Wagner of in his email, writing, quote, does the firm you want to pilot for for air purification have any other government contracts or perhaps a contract with a national purchasing cooperative? If so, we can meet our competitive requirements without doing a bid or RFP. Wagner quickly forwards Stag's question to Harris at R0 and asks him whether he has that. Harris reassures him they do from another state, North Carolina, so they're able to lawfully circumvent a bidding process. This legal workaround to a bidding process troubles trustee Ford. It's baffling that it's not illegal, but it's, but it's not. Um, it's, in my opinion, unethical and it's been relied on frequently. Top of mind, I would say about 80% of the money that comes through the CCSD is not competitively bid. More on that to follow. 
Also on July 15th, Wagner arranges an opportunity at a large-scale schools summit in D.C. for he and Harris to make a public presentation to industry attendees about the Arc Towers. July 22nd, Staggs prepares this purchasing recommendation, cites justification for purchase as applicable statute that permits utilizing another government agency's bid, referencing state of North Carolina. July 26th, Staggs tells R0 he believes the facilities team's recommendation will need superintendent direction since they're, quote, making the purchase prior to board approval. August 5th, trustees were briefed in a closed session on the R0 purchase. I supported the item at the time, but there weren't any conflict of interest that I saw. Ford says trustees could have pulled it aside for questioning at this briefing, but says in her experience, her requests routinely get voted down. There's so many times that I have requested to pull something just for discussion, to ask on the record, why do we choose this company or why was this exempt from uh, collective bargaining and the trustees, the majority for vote, vote me down, even being able to ask that question. So a week later at a board meeting, the purchase is put on the consent agenda. At that point, trustees don't have a line item veto. The vote on the consent calendar is an all or nothing proposition. We're expected to just be button pushers, rubber stamps, push it through. Uh, don't ask questions. Nobody is questioning whether R0's product is effective or if the money was well spent. In that board meeting, the big purchase of about 370 ARC Towers officially goes through. $7.5 million to the Utah-based brand from the ESSER Fund through the CARES Act. A week after that, Wagner forwards Harris contact information for leaders in 77 other urban school districts and recommends attending another large-scale schools conference. Days later, on August 25th, media is invited to check out the rollout. Fox 5 story airs. Today we got a better look at R0. That system can disinfect an empty classroom in just seven minutes. Kills germs without any harmful chemicals. I've been saying this throughout the entire pandemic. There's no silver bullet that's going to make uh, the building's 100% safe. This is one tool in our layer strategy for uh, virus mitigation. Now, most people, after seeing our report, likely thought, okay, probably didn't think much of it. But for one Las Vegas man, he says seeing this on the news was a shock and disappointment. It was pretty devastating. A multi-million dollar deal slipping through his fingers. Unfortunately, we didn't get any consideration for our product, even though we were supposed to be in the system and should have been contacted for that. So yeah. there was no bidding process as far as we knew. This Las Vegas man founded a UVC disinfecting technology business of his own during the pandemic. They sell a tower product similar to our zeros. My sister's a teacher. My mom's a retired teacher. My dad's a retired principal. All at CCSD? All at CCSD. So wow. um, and I grew up in Las Vegas, a local with a solution. Uh, it seemed like it would be a great fit for the school district. So he reached out to Wagner to find out why there wasn't a bidding process. August 27th, Mendelssohn emailed Wagner saying, we went through the whole process with my company to be in the vendor system for CCSD. To my knowledge, there was no bidding process for the UVC tower acquisition. I'm sure you can understand my frustration seeing the news on TV for such a sizable contract, knowing we were not considered for the opportunity if we were in the situation where we were in a bidding war, we would have done everything we could to be as competitive as possible. But Wagner tells Mendelssohn, to my knowledge, no one within the facility services unit was provided your product information for review. We have reviewed dozens of UVC products over the last 18 months and found many of them not to be the right fit for applications here at CCSD. Soon after, Wagner had Mendelssohn come to his office so Mendelssohn could present his product, even though the sale with R0 already went through. And what kind of reaction did you get response from Jeff? Uh, you know, it was a, a straightforward kind of, you know, thank you, kind of had a, a poker face about it. And then we never heard anything again. He says Wagner didn't mention that they'd been exempt from a bidding process because of that North Carolina contract that R0 had landed after open bidding. On September 9th, R0's Harris asks Wagner to put in a good word for them with Clarence Carson, then facilities chief of the third largest school district in the U.S., Chicago. Wagner agrees to email Chicago's chief to let them know he's a resource if they have any questions about R0. 
When I asked for a record of his December 15th resignation letter, I was denied by a document control specialist who told me it was confidential. Three weeks later, January 5th, 2022, R0 announces that Wagner has joined their team as general manager of education. According to Wagner's LinkedIn, he worked full time for the company for five months as GM, but according to R0, later became an advisor with them. Now, over the course of several months, I tried to get in touch with Wagner through R0 to give him the chance to respond to my findings, but was unsuccessful. The only response I received was from R0's spokesperson who, after I presented him with my findings, responded, quote, We pride ourselves on operating with the highest business ethics and integrity. We are proud of our partnership with the Clark County School District, which began when they and schools nationwide needed help with solutions to minimize the incidence of SARS-CoV-2. Since then, our technology continues to make a difference in school buildings, helping protect the health and well-being of students, faculty and staff in Nevada and across the country. Mr. Wagner currently serves as an advisor with R0 as we continue to work to provide solutions to school districts, hospitals, offices, retirement communities, restaurants and many industries nationwide. I also reached out to Harris several times, but didn't hear back. So this summer, on June 22nd, 2022, I went straight to the top, both of the state and of its education system, and shared my reporting with the department's head honcho. That uh, needs to go to the AG's office. That would not fall under the purview of the State Board of Education. About five weeks later, I asked CCSD Superintendent Dr. Jesus Jara about the circumstances of the R0 purchase. I have full confidence that we didn't violate any law, so I think that's misguided. One thing's for sure. For Mendelssohn, losing out on his chance at a multi-million dollar contract still packs a sting. To get overlooked for something like that, it's, it's a pretty big deal. But despite it all, he is reminded of why he got into the business to begin with, to protect Southern Nevadans from a deadly virus. We're still here. Uh, we have great products. I would love the chance to be considered if there's another round of things being done to improve the health of the classrooms in the school district. Um, I know our products are standout. We'll continue looking into why another state's contract with a vendor makes it okay to bypass a bidding process. I'm Maddie White, Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas.